we can get started. So again, I'm Steph Ban. I'm with my colleague Violetta Flemenbaum, and we're happy to be here virtually with you today. Okay, to start off, we're going to give a little bit of an introduction of uh, each of ourselves. So my name is Steph Ban. I have been a HUD certified housing and financial counselor with the GLCU. Uh, I was hired in December 2019. Uh, my office, when we have offices, which is not right now, uh, but when we have offices, my office is in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Um, one of my areas of interest is housing and financial counseling and accessibility for people with disabilities. I have multiple disabilities myself. I know how important accessibility is. So that is one of my passions is to bring housing and financial counseling services to people with disabilities in a way that works for their individual needs. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Violetta Flemenbaum, um, and like Steph said, right now we're not in the office, but um, when that opens up, my office is located in our branch out of North Chicago, Illinois. Um, I'm also a HUD certified counselor, and I've been with Great Lakes just like Steph um, since December of 2019. Um, Previous to Great Lakes Credit Union, I was working over for the Illinois Housing Development Authority in their mortgage assistance program. I am fully bilingual, um, so if there are, um, if you have any family or friends that do require a Spanish speaking um, HUD counselor, I can assist them. Okay. I'm going to go over uh, really briefly some basic uh, web etiquette agreements. Uh, number one, be respectful, uh, pretty self-explanatory, uh, no name calling in the chat, respectful language to everyone, uh, no discrimination, nothing like that. Um, ask questions, and the way that you can ask questions throughout this presentation is in the chat box, which is at the, um, I can't see because I'm sharing my screen, but I believe it's the bottom right. It looks like a chat bubble and you can uh, type messages to either one of us or to um, the group, I believe. Uh, but you can ask questions in the chat if you have them or if you have comments or feedback. Um, another way that we'll ask for feedback is at the end of the presentation, uh, Violetta will be posting in the chat a link to a feedback form where we'll uh, direct you to a DocuSign that will say, webinar participant, please sign. Uh, and that's how you can give us feedback too after the presentation. We really do value all of your feedback, all of your questions, all of your interaction. And uh, in the presentation, we'll occasionally be asking questions or asking what do you think about this and feel free to post that in the chat as well. Uh, first order of business, uh, there is a sign-in link the purpose of the sign-in link is basically twofold. Uh, number one, HUD, who is the federal regulating body of us, that's the uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development, they want to make sure that when we have webinars that we're actually serving clients. So if you fill in the sign-in form, you get to get yourself counted as a client, uh, let them know that we served you, let us know a little bit about you so that we can make our services even better fit for you. Uh, the second purpose is that later on in the presentation, Violetta and I will be going over a resource sheet of various helpful links around student aid and where to look for scholarships and various other resources. It will be up on the slide, but if you fill in the sign-in form, you will also get a copy of that resource link as a PDF, so you can save that you can share it, you can download it if you have it as a PDF. So the way to get that is to fill in the sign-in form. I believe Violetta just put that in the chat. And then here the link is on the slide as well. Uh, we will repost it at the end of the presentation. So if you missed it now, no worries. If you want to repost it again or don't see it, just let us know in the chat. Okay, and like Steph said, yeah, if 
that link um, is very helpful for us. It, it allows us to continue bringing you um, these free webinars that we really enjoy um, giving to the community. Now let's get uh, quickly into just Great Lakes and overview before we get into the, the meat and bones of our webinar. Um, so an overview of, of program and services, you know, people are like, what are, what's Great Lakes Credit Union's Housing and Financial Counseling Department? So our mission is Great Lakes Credit Union Department of Housing and Financial Services propels financial health by providing exceptional financial education and counseling in the areas of credit and financial management, rental counseling, home ownership education, and foreclosure intervention. And just a, a few little things on the background, our background here at Great Lakes, um, we are only one of six credit unions in the entire country um, that is also a HUD approved counseling agency. Um, so it's wonderful to be able to have that support. Um, we've also received our HUD designation back in 2005. So we've been doing this a while. Um, and historically we serve about um, anywhere between 500 and 1000 households a year through our education and and our one on one counseling. Now, just a quick overview of our programs and services. Um, again, we provide financial education um, and credit counseling. So, for example, example, with those, we would review your credit report and scores. Um, teach you how to increase your credit score if that's your goal, um, create an action plan to decrease debt. Um, a lot of time people come to us because they, they wanna be able to have a way to decrease their debt. Um, so we can create an action plan. Um, also help you access credit building products if you're unscored or again, looking to build your credit. Um, we give you tips on negotiating with uh, debt collectors and we also go over your credit report to make sure there aren't any errors. Um, if there are, you know, we give you the tools to correct that um, and those services are free. Um, the, credit, the credit report is free. It's a soft pull. It doesn't affect your credit scores. Um, we provide rental counseling. Um, with that, we would do an affordability analysis um, also to see if you qualify for affordable housing programs. And then, you know, when appropriate, we will refer you to your local county housing authority or any other um, rental programs that might be appropriate for you. Um, Pre-purchase counseling, that's basically um, to assess home ownership readiness and affordability, um, help you evaluate the different lending products. There's a lot of lending products out there. Um, help you qualify for down payment assistance programs. A lot of those do require that you meet with us and you also take um, an online course. And there are many right now, if you're looking to buy a home, many, many down payment assistance programs. Um, there's a lot of money out there. Um, we also help you learn about the mortgage and closing process that can be you know, very overwhelming. Um, and we also connect you to trusted lenders, um, real estate agents, insurance agents, and other professionals if needed. Um, these are people that you know we work with, we we make sure that they're going to treat our clients right. Now, post purchase counseling and foreclosure prevention. So, for post purchase, for example, we can help you set up a budget for home maintenance expenses. Uh, maybe you want to make sure you have that, that cushion in case your dishwasher breaks or the washing machine breaks. Um, we also help you with the refinance process. Some people come to us for post purchase counseling because they're looking to refinance. You know, rates are super low right now. Um, so we have had a lot of that. We also, um, for foreclosure prevention, um, help you identify mortgage assistance options. Um, we help you understand the foreclosure timeline and how to avoid that. And then also to consider alternatives with your lender. So to go over the agenda for today, we're first going to talk about um, briefly about applying for financial aid, kind of how you can do that, how you can get the process started. Uh, we're then going to go over different options for student loans. Again, this will be kind of a brief, kind of uh, more general overview, uh, public, uh, private and federal loans. And then we're going to go over some scholarship options not going into too many specifics, but again, just uh, general options or places to start looking. Uh, we're going to go over building your savings for college and other options you might have to decrease your college costs. And then finally, we're going to share some resources, which again, 
If you want that resource sheet as a PDF, the way to do that is to fill in the uh, sign-in form. So starting off with a little bit of a question, uh, you can type your answer in the chat and Violetta will be looking at that. I can't look at it right now because I'm sharing the screen, uh, but Violetta, you can just point out some responses and then we can kind of riff off those. Uh, sure, what is absolutely. one thing you're looking to learn from this workshop? Maybe a thing that you're curious about finances in college or a thing that you want to know more about or what brought you into this workshop or anything else? Um, and uh, people are putting in here what brought them to this workshop. They want to find out what scholarships are available. Um, people are looking for scholarship resources, um, you know, with, especially with future graduating classes, someone has a child that's graduating in 2022. Awesome. So, yeah, this is definitely the right place to get um, kind of a brief overview of what might be available um, on scholarships. One thing that I can say right now is another great resource if your child has a guidance counselor or someone at their school helping them with college planning things, uh, they should have access to databases of scholarships. Uh, depending on their relationship with your child, they might even know what they might qualify for in terms of grades or talents or interests. So uh, you're welcome to use these resources that we're going to share, but also uh, don't discount the power of your uh, high school support network if you have them as well. And I just wanted to add quickly to that as well. I learned from my own child that graduated um, this past year. For when you're applying to colleges, a lot of them do um, have like a fee associated with the application. Um, have your kids ask their college counselor if they, um, a lot of schools will have have basically like vouchers or some way to pay for those applications. Um, so it's good for your child to just ask about that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about applying for financial aid. This is AKA the FAFSA, F-A-F-S-A. -S you may have heard of it. Um, but so really basically financial aid is money to help you or your student uh, pay for college or career school. So that would also uh, count community college, trade school, things like that. Um, it stands for free application for federal student aid. As the name says, it is free. There's no uh, fee to apply for FAFSA. There's no income limit. So even if you think that you're above a certain level of income, you can still apply for free. Um, there's no guarantee how much uh, federal student aid you can get from the FAFSA. If you make very high income, for example, you may not get that much, uh, but it is still worth applying because it is how you qualify for federal grants, loans, or work study programs. So grants are basically gifts of money to the student they're not expected to be paid back. Um, some grants are through the school itself. Other grants work different ways. There are um, even federal grants. And then loans are also money awarded to help the student pay for school, but loans are expected to be paid back. Uh, work study is basically a system where the student works a part-time job on campus or affiliated with the school, and part of that money uh, gets funneled back into their tuition or their room and board to help pay for that. Uh, to complete the FAFSA, you do need a valid social security number. Okay, uh, now for a brief overview of what's kind of involved with student loans. So first, uh, there is federal student loans. You have to complete FAFSA to apply for those. Uh, some advantages of the federal loans are that often the interest rate is lower, which means you end up owing a little bit less than you would if the interest rate was really high. 
um, federal student loans not only have lower interest rates generally than private loans, but they also are fixed, which means that the interest rate uh, stays the same over the life of the loan, uh, meaning that there's no going to be no incre huge increases in interest, especially if you're not able to pay off the loan for a while. Another advantage of federal student loans is that they don't need a credit history, which means that any enrolled undergraduate can uh, get them and qualify for them, uh, no problem. There are credit history requirements on loans like uh, direct plus loans or the parent plus loans. So if you want to co-sign uh, loans for your child and you have good credit, you can do that as a parent or a guardian, you can, but it's not needed. Uh, and then the other advantage being of federal loans being that payments aren't due till after the student graduated, leaves, or if they leave school or uh, change their status away from full-time student status. So those are some examples of uh, federal loans as well as having more flexible repayment options. So there are several repayment options like income-based repayment plans where the amount of repayment per month is based on uh, the student's gross income. Uh, that's designed to be a little bit more affordable for students that graduate and don't immediately get a high paying job. Um, there's also extended level repayment, uh, which is basically a flat rate that doesn't change. It's just the monthly payment stays the same through the life of the loan. Um, so we have all these options on federal loans. Private student loans, uh, which again, for more information on federal and private student loans, you can go to studentaid.gov. Uh, and then they have a page about understanding aid. And this will be in the resource uh, sheet as well as I think I see it in the chat as well. Thanks, Violetta. Um, with private student loans, the interest rate is based on credit profile. So the student would need to either have a credit profile or have a co-signer with a credit profile, um, parent, guardian, adult friend, anything like that. Um, you can apply for a private loan if you're undocumented, but you must have a U.S. citizen or a U.S. permanent resident as a co-signer. Um, in many cases, private student loans have higher borrowing limits, and that's because uh, federal student loans, depending on the cost of the school, sometimes don't cover everything. So some people choose to take private loans to cover the rest of the cost of either tuition or room and board or both. Um, and then here are some private student loan options, kind of uh, some main players, Sally Mae, Discover, Citizens Bank. Uh, there are others and I would urge checking out your local bank or credit union uh, to see what kind of private student loans they might offer as well. Uh, one of the disadvantages of private student loans is that they often have less flexible uh, payment op repayment options or borrowing options than federal, and they have less regulation as well. So there's a little bit more freedom for, for the lenders themselves to kind of set their own rules and terms. Okay, so now we're going to uh, talk about understanding educational tax credits. Um, I am, again, going to paste that link in the chat um, for that website where to go on that. Um, always definitely check that link with the IRR because they do change, you know, in terms of amounts and um, how you qualify. But for now, um, the information we have, you know, if you have a kid in college or you're in college yourself or a kid going to college, it's important to know that there are educational um, tax benefits. Um, there's the American Opportunity Tax Credit. That provides up to $2,500 in credits of the cost of qualified tuition and course materials, and this would be um, for anyone making $80,000 or less 
or if you're a married couple filing jointly, $160,000 or less. Um, the other one is the lifetime learning credit. Um, that's for post-secondary education after high school. It is available for people who are pursuing a degree um, and also for people improving job skills. So if you're, for example, already working and um, your boss is requiring, you know, you to get additional training in a certain skill um, and you do that, you know, through a college or university, you can claim that lifetime learning credit. Um, the credit, depending on your income, could be as high as $2,000. So, you know, that's certainly an amount to look into. Um, and for this one, eligible taxpayers who make $52,000 or less, um, or married couples who make $104,000 or less. Um, again, I would urge you to check that IRS link that I posted um, just to see any updates. Um, we know with the government, they constantly change. Um, so definitely check that link. And also, if you have an accountant with your accountant, um, if you have a child in college now and you still haven't filed those taxes, I know they extended the deadline, um, check with your accountant to see if, if you can qualify for any of those educational tax credits. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many types of scholarships. Um, we're just going to go over a few of the overall uh, main types. But again, as far as where to find them, uh, guidance counselors are excellent resources. Uh, free scholarship databases online are great resources. I know GLCU itself has had a scholarship uh, contest. I don't think that the one this year is still going on, but this is uh, something that they have. Uh, so keep in mind, if you're a member of any local clubs, local community groups, they might have scholarships too. Um, so just the main, some of the main types. Uh, Need-based scholarships are financial aid given to students on the basis of financial need which is most often uh, defined by income level. Uh, so certain schools give more need-based aid than others, and that's something that these schools, uh, financial aid departments should be able to talk to you and or your student about. Uh, there are academic scholarships, which are based on student grades, uh, GPA, sometimes test scores on the ACT and SAT, Sometimes things like being a national merit uh, scholar finalist, where you take their test and fill out their information. Uh, you can get scholarships based on that sometimes. Uh, there are scholarships based on talent in a certain area, uh, like sports or music. Um, again, given to student athletes, maybe, if they want to continue playing a sport in college, musicians, if they want to uh, continue uh, their craft, uh, things like memberships in certain clubs, whether or not you're planning to continue in college. I know when I did a uh, speech team in high school, the speech, the National Forensics Association had a scholarship too. So if your uh, student is involved in any extracurriculars, it's worth looking into. Uh, there are scholarships for unique interests or uh, kind of creative, funny things that students can do. A lot of those tend to be on the smaller side, but they can add up or supplement other bigger scholarships. Uh, if you're a Star Trek fan, if you're a left-handed person, if you're in the Scouts, Eagle Scouts or Girl Scouts, um, if you, I remember my school at one point had a if you make your prom dress out of saran wrap, they would give you a small scholarship. Um, so again, and there's lots of, especially in the age of uh, everything being virtual, I would bet that there's a lot of make a video about a cause that matters to you or make a video proving why you need the scholarship and submit it there. Um, that would be an option. So there's lots of out there, just look around and find what fits you. Uh, there's also some scholarships based on diverse health status, disability status, or chronic illness, most often available through uh, a national or local association or group based on a specific disability or 
condition, so uh, muscular dystrophy, vision impairment, uh, spinal cord injury, things like that. So I would check around any local groups if your student is affiliated with any local disability communities or any uh, rehab hospitals. I know Mary and Joy uh, locally in the suburbs was giving out a scholarship a while ago. Um, so I would just check into that as well if you qualify for that. Um, one other thing I did want to mention when we talk about scholarships, um, not only are guidance counselors a great resource, but I have heard of a lot of scams, especially online where these databases advertise, oh, pay this application fee to apply for this scholarship. Um, and that that most often is not legit. You most often do not have to pay to apply uh, for basically free money. So I'd be very wary of that. Look out for scams, look out for online uh, places that require you to put in a bunch of personal information up front. If you're ever kind of unsure, take uh, the website link to someone at the student's high school or even someone at a college who might know, uh, just be really careful with your information. Okay, uh, here is one way uh, that you can save for college, either uh, your own account or if you're saving for a child or a student that you're uh, taking care of. You might have heard of Bright Start. This is what this is. Uh, it's called Bright Directions now. Um, but it's basically the same thing. So one of the ways to save up for college is through this plan. It's a plan where assets are tax deferred, meaning that uh, you're not taxed on them either when you contribute or when you take the money out to use on a qualified expense. Um, so it's really an advantage to have this type of account if you can. Uh, you don't even have to have a lot in it and it can just uh, keep building up. Um, so again, you don't have to pay either federal or Illinois state tax when you use it on qualifying expenses. What are qualifying expenses? Uh, an accountant could probably tell you the most detail on that, but I know that qualifying expenses are accounted as expenses incurred in the course of school, whether that be a two-year university, a uh, four-year university or a trade school. So basically, if it's related to higher education, uh, to tuition, room and board, or supplies, it's most likely going to be qualified expense. Um, so when you do that, there is an income tax deduction or credit of 10000 per year for individuals or 20000 uh, a year for married couples. So you can uh, contribute up to that amount and uh, deduct it off your taxes so you don't have to pay on that. Again, you can only use it on qualified higher education expenses. If you have specific questions, I would direct you to a tax professional or an accountant. Um, but again, as long as you can keep that demonstrably school related and not be spending it on things like an unrelated vacation, um, I would say yeah, you're good on that. There are um, other options to save on college costs besides just getting a scholarship. Um, so, oh, let's just feel it in the chat. Um, there are other options to save for college beyond just getting a scholarship if uh, you find that scholarships will cover it or if your, you or your student would rather uh, get their general educational requirements out of the way and then transfer. Community college could be a great way to do that while saving a ton of money. Uh, basically how community college works is that the student can take uh, general education classes requirements uh, for two years, get credit on those, and then transfer that credit to a four-year university to then continue their degree at the four-year university. A great advantage of community college is they're most often located in the local 
community. A lot of them are commuter schools. So if your student lives at home or would like to continue living at home without incurring the, excuse me, the added expense of room and board in a separate uh, dorm room, or you don't want to incur the travel expense, that could be a way to save on that for two years. Uh, they will save um, quite a bit if it's executed correctly on classes themselves, because a lot of four-year schools, the first two years are general education requirements anyway. And I've heard anecdotally from a lot of uh, my friends and people I talk to that gen eds are gen eds uh, for most schools. So it might not make too much of a difference to take them at a community college and be saving money versus taking them at a four year college and spending more money. Uh, there are lots of local community colleges around. We just link to College of Lake County, but there's community colleges often multiple in every county. Um, one of the things I want to stress on community colleges is you have to be aware and careful that the credits that the student incurs during the first two years will actually uh, successfully transfer to the four-year university. Uh, so again, if your community college has a transfer coordinator or if your student has a four-year college in mind, I would urge getting in contact uh, with both of those people, both at the community college and the four year college, uh, as soon as you can, just to make sure that your student is on the right path with choosing classes that will actually transfer over and they will actually successfully get credit for them. Because the other option there would be having to retake the classes for credit at the four year university, which kind of negates the um, good amount of savings that you incur from uh, going to a community college. So that can be a great option to save money. There is also uh, loan forgiveness. If you are in a qualifying profession or plan to be, um, if you want to speak to a student loan counselor, which uh, we're housing and financial counselors, so we know quite a bit about student loans, but if you have specific questions or want kind of advice on and guidance on what plan works for well for you. Uh, the NFCC, National Foundation on Credit Counseling, uh, would be the place we would direct you to for specific student loan counseling. They're a nonprofit, so their services should be either very low cost or free. You can go to nfcc.org. Uh, all of those student counselors uh, that you get in contact with from that website should be accredited again it's a nonprofit so you can call go to nfcc.org or call 800-388-2227 it may ask you for a zip code so you can just enter that and then you should get uh, connected to someone who can do student loan counseling uh, near you um, it might be a virtual service at this point um, so it could be a great option if you feel like you're struggling with your amount of loans or you don't quite know what options you qualify for. Um, so really briefly, two of the options that you may qualify for include public service loan forgiveness and teacher loan forgiveness. So public service loan forgiveness is basically a government program. It has to be renewed every few years. So there's no guarantee that, as with most government programs, there's no guarantee that it will stay around forever. But as for now, it's still going. Um, you may be able to receive loan forgiveness under PSLF if you are employed by a government or not-for-profit organization. Uh, so teachers, hospital workers, uh, government employees are examples of people who may qualify. Uh, basically, under the PSLF program, uh, you make qualifying payments on an income-based plan. Uh, you make 120 qualifying months of payment, which is about 10 years. Um, and then at, if you've made your 10 years of qualifying payments, the rest of your loan balance is forgiven. Again, with PSLF, there's kind of a lot of um, minor details and requirements. So you want to make sure that you're actually uh, getting started on the program or continuing the program 
uh, the way you're supposed to. I've, I've heard from a handful of clients who thought they were on the program and then something went wrong and those payments weren't qualifying, so it can be a headache. Uh, so I would just get make sure you reach out uh, profession, you know, to a professional who knows and make sure you really know what you're getting into with that. Uh, there's also teacher loan forgiveness, where if you teach full time for five complete and consecutive academic years in a low income uh, K through 12 school or an educational service agency you might be eligible for forgiveness of up to 17,500 of uh, direct loans. So that might be something else you can look into. There's also aid for military families, which I'll have Violetta post the link from studentaid.gov that goes more into that. But basically, if the student is in the military, plans to be in the military, uh, the direct relative of someone who's in the military or a th direct uh, relative of a veteran, they may qualify for aid and scholarships. I know that there are scholarships um, available if your direct relative is a veteran. Uh, again, most likely available through local DFW chapters, local clubs, things like that. Okay. So, um... These are resources and links, um, and I'll let Seth go over that quickly. Yeah, no problem. Um, so we have the FAFSA link, which I won't like manually read out every link, but I wanted to keep this up for a few minutes on the screen, um, just in case you wanted to copy it down. Again, if you fill in that sign-in form, you don't have to worry about copying this down. Uh, we will give this to you, this exact sheet, as a PDF. Uh, as a bonus, Violetta has also uh, taken the time to find uh, Spanish resources and, uh, you know, find some of these resources in Spanish as well. So if you are a Spanish speaker or know a Spanish speaker, uh, you can um, just let us know by email, which will put up our email at the end of the presentation and you can just email us and let us know if you want the uh, Spanish materials as well and we'd be happy to get that to you. Um, and then I just want to add quickly oh. add on to that stuff for anyone um, who does again fill in that sign in form and gets this PDF. Um, if you are a Spanish speaker, we'll, we'll send that other PDF with the resources. Um, but a lot of these websites, not all of them, a lot do offer this Spanish um, viewing option. If you usually it's at the top of the website, it'll say language, and it'll let you click on Spanish. Sometimes on additional languages, um, so that could also be helpful uh, for those of you who might have family members who are Spanish speaking. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for that uh, addition. Um, so we have the FAFSA link, which is uh, just a link about. Understanding FAFSA, a lot of these links go to studentaid.gov, which um, we're more inclined to trust government websites. So anything ending in .gov tends to be a trustworthy source, especially on government programs. So we have the federal student loan and private student loan links from studentaid.gov. Um, there is information on educational uh, tax credits from irs.gov um, for scholarships there's some examples of uh, resources that you can look uh, so there's one through abv immunology so that's a b b v i e immunology scholarship.com uh, there's one for music majors called majoring in music.com uh, there is uh, Discover, who's also a student lender, also keeps a list of uh, scholarships. And uh, there's often scholarships on the webpage of local clubs, credit unions, some banks, um, maybe even through a high school. Certain high schools give certain scholarships. So again, just look around and there's lots of free general uh, databases as well. Uh, Bright Start, you can go to brightstart.com to learn more about that. And then with loan forgiveness or cancellation, you can go to studentaid.gov and 
learn all about uh, forgiveness and cancellation. One of the other things I do want to mention on uh, loan forgiveness is um, if you're considered to have a disability that is total and permanent, means meaning it uh, prevents you from working and you have student loans, you may be eligible for total and permanent disability discharge. So that studentaid.gov should have information on that. I know uh, President Biden just took a step to uh, make more out people eligible for that or simplify the process of uh, becoming eligible for that. So if that's your situation or you know someone in that situation, uh, it's worth checking out. It's called Total and Permanent Disability Discharge. Okay, so um, with the questions, I know there were a few in here in the chat. Let me see if I can scroll back up. Um, I know a lot of you had asked about the scholarship resources. Again, um, as Seth mentioned, that PDF will be sent um, once we get your sign-in information. Um, and I'll post that link, um, that sign-in link again. Um, let's see, and we do have a question, Seth. Um, someone wants to know, will we get a copy of the slides after the meeting so we can review um, what was mentioned today? To my knowledge, um, uh, the copy of the slides will not be available. However, we are recording this and we do hope uh, to release it most likely on our YouTube page. So keep an eye out for that. But at this time, we can't promise uh, a turnaround time. So we will keep you updated on that, as well as if you filled in the science form, we will send you the PDF uh, resource sheet that we just went over. Um, let me see. Was that it for that question? Oh, it, go ahead. For that question, and then we have another one. Um, when should we apply for FAFSA and scholarships? Um, so generally, as soon as possible. I mean, you, you can't apply for it when you're a junior. You apply for um, FAFSA basically senior year, you know, once going into the college year into your freshman college year and the website will have the deadlines on there like when it opens when it closes um so check the fafsa website but basically as soon as it opens um go in there and fill that out um the sooner the better with scholarships the same thing um it's always the sooner the better and again i don't believe you can apply junior year um you can always check them out, but I believe it's usually senior year when they start um, taking those applications, unless you're um, it, like a athlete or some kind of special talent and, you know, recruiters are already in touch with your family. Um, usually, you know, with scholarships, FAFSA, uh, FAFSA, senior year, you know, going into graduation so that you know how much money you'll have um, entering that freshman year. Yeah. And, and I then, um, Go ahead, Viola. Oh, I was just going to say, and I'm going to repost that um, sign in link again um, just so people can see it here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so the sign in link, I believe, should take you to a page that says webinar and participant, and then you hit begin signing, and then you fill in your information on the boxes for what's required. So they collect some demographic information that's for HUD purposes uh, because they regulate us. Um, so once you've uh, done, filled all of that out, all the required boxes, uh, you sign at the bottom digitally and then hit either finish or submit, which I believe is a yellow button, maybe top right. Um, and then once you've hit the finish or submit button, you should get a thing that says like, thanks for submitting or you're all done signing or something to that effect. Once you get that, you can be sure that you have successfully signed in and then we've received your um or rather the counseling department has received your uh sign in form um so make sure you fill everything out and then hit submit uh if you don't hit submit there's no guarantee that it will be counted so i i saw a question on that like how do i know if i signed in fill everything out hit submit or finish uh, whatever that button is and then once you get a, a message that you're done, uh, that should be that. Uh, another thing I want to say on scholarships is, um, especially if you're getting into 
local scholarship options or specific places or um, veteran scholarships or disability-based scholarships. Um, some of those are in like a rolling deadline uh, where, you know, the earlier you apply within the window, the better chance you have of getting reviewed earlier. Some of them are, have, you know, strict deadlines that it's due this date at 5 p.m. Uh, some of them have interviews, so, you know, you have to abide by their deadlines because they have to reach out to interview applicants. So I would just um, make sure to work with your student or if you're applying for yourself, make sure to um, keep an eye out on when various deadlines are so that you don't miss them. I know um, when I was in high school, some of my friends had like very detailed Excel sheets on this is the scholarship I'm going for. This is what they require. Uh, this is when the deadline is. This is what I need to do. Uh, you don't need, quite need that level of detail. It's whatever works for you and your student. But I would just keep an eye on those um, deadlines. So um, what else was I going to say about that? Um, I would say also that uh, um, some scholarships, depending on uh, the scholarship, do require like a transcript or proof of GPA and or a writing sample. So I would make sure that you give yourself you or your student give yourself enough time uh, to do that too. If there's a pretty involved application, uh, just make sure you give yourself kind of the, the time and the space to do that on time. Um, were there any other questions, Violetta, that you see that I missed? Um, I don't see any more, but I did want to add to what you were saying as well. You remind me with scholarships um some may require um like recommendations from a teacher or some kind of leader um if your child is involved like in a youth group or again for example scouts one of those um just make sure your child starts um gathering you know the list of teachers adults that may be good referrals um for scholarships and college applications um and someone did mention that the fafsa opens on october 1st of each year um and you're correct it should be it needs to be completed um senior year and every year after that while your child is in college so it is a yearly application you have to fill out unfortunately um but it looks like it does open october 1st yeah and i know fafsa i don't know if this uh, applies to anyone, um, but I know FAFSA is required uh, for graduate students who want federal aid as well. So you don't escape it even if you go to grad school, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to give us a minute to, you know, if you have any other questions or things that you want to, um, you know, want us to comment on, please. Uh, let us know, otherwise we can go to like uh, the ending slides and give out the feedback form, but we do have about 10 ish more minutes left. So there is um, plenty more time for a, a few more questions if people have them. Um, some other things I just want to throw out there to consider is uh, generally out-of-state colleges will be more expensive than in-state colleges. Um, so that's also something to keep in mind, you know, if you're looking at a budget, you know, college-wise, um, usually out-of-state will unfortunately be more expensive. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Looks like we have one more question. Um, aren't the federal student loans capped at 5500 per student in the first year? Um, with that, I am not, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure what the um, first year cap is. Um, I thought it was up to $12,000, um, but that would be something um, you definitely want to check on that studentaid.gov website. Yeah, likewise, I know that there's a cap. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, you can make a note to research it or um, that studentaid.gov website should be able to tell you as well. But I know that there is a cap to 
to the federal loans, hence um, some people choosing also to take out private if the federal doesn't cover it. Um, there are still a few more minutes for questions if you have them, but I did want to go to the feedback form uh, link. So this is just a feedback form. Again, we really do welcome feedback, even if you weren't a fan of this presentation or there was something here that doesn't work for you. We want to know that. Um, it won't hurt our feelings. Feedback is a gift, and we really want to uh, be the best presenters that we can for you and make this the most best, the most helpful and best presentation that it can be. Uh, so if you liked something, if you didn't like something, if you want to see more of something, if you have suggestions for future workshops, um, then you know, then feel free to put that down. We do take suggestions for future workshops if we get like a critical mass of people who want a certain housing or financial topic. Uh, sometimes we present with community partners that are attorneys or home inspectors or mortgage lenders um, that fill in the kind of gaps that we can't do by ourselves. I do see one more question, Violetta, do you know what that says? Um, let me see. Oh, okay. Are there any other sites that offer scholarships, like a repository of scholarships? Um, there are some sites that PDF that we will be sending people who fill in the sign-in form does have a link. Um, Discover, for example, has a link for um, different types of scholarships. You don't have to pay or, or create an account with them. Um, you should be able just to click on that and they show all the different types of scholarships that are available. Um, so we will have that link on the PDF as well. And then I don't know, Steph, if you know of any other sites that offer like uh, scholarship, mm -hmm. like a repository of scholarships? I'm trying to think, um, trying to think what I had heard of. Um, College Board looks like it has uh, some scholarships available, so they might maintain a database as well. So that's collegeboard.org. Um, and I think there's just various other sites. Again, be very wary of asking to put in a bunch of uh, personal information at once. But uh, one thing you can do if you find a database is uh, navigate directly to then that scholarship's website. So if they say, oh, a scholarship is available through, uh, through this local bank, then you can always go directly to that local bank's website and find out more. You don't have to apply on any of the database websites. Uh, in fact, if you're asked to, that's kind of a, a red flag, what I would consider a red flag. Um, so again, fill out that post-workshop survey, uh, that would really help us. Is it too late to contribute to a tax-free savings account if my child was a sophomore? I would not think so. Um, again, ask your tax professional for specific guidance on like, how much or what kind of credits you might qualify for, but I don't believe there's like an age uh, cut off unless the child is already in college. Um, so I think you should be good to start a savings account. If your child was a sophomore, I don't see why you couldn't, but again, tax professional accountant would be the best source. Okay, and you may be wondering, okay, how do we reach you guys? We we love the presentation. We want to get in touch with you. Um, so we have several ways. And again, we're here to help. Our services are free. Um, and when appropriate, you know, we'll refer you to an appropriate um, counseling agency if it's something that we can provide. But again, our services are free. Um, by web, you can reach us at glcu.org. I am going to post the link in the chat box. Um, just give me a second here. Okay, so the link in the chat box at glcu.org um, allows you to reach us by web. From there, you can schedule a quick 30-minute screening appointment with any of us. 
we have four counselors, um, HUD certified counselors on staff, and, and we're happy to help um, any resident, regardless, regardless of county in Illinois and also Wisconsin. Um, so you can click on that link. If you prefer to give us a call, our phone number is 224-252-2620. Um, if you just want to send us an email, that is housing at glcu.org. And I'm going to actually um, post the phone number and the email in the chat box as well, um, just so you have that information. Let's see. Okay, good. It did show up on there. Um, and again, you know, we're happy to answer any questions. You know, if you give us a call, if you send us an email, um, we're always happy to answer questions or, or try to find the answer for you. Um, so definitely, you know, feel free to keep in touch with us. I am going to, again, I know I've posted the intake form. I am going to go ahead and um, also post the feedback form. Um, again, you know, as Steph has mentioned, um, feedback is a gift. Um, and we do, we do take the feedback seriously because um, that does help us provide um, workshops that are of interest to the community. So um, definitely, you know, if, if you're able to, I would encourage you to um, complete that feedback form and I'm just posting it in here. Let's see. Okay, there it is. Um, so yeah, and that feedback form is very helpful. Oh, oh sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Sure. Um, if you would maybe post the intake form just in case some people didn't get it too. Um, oh, sure. Just so they have it if they want to sign in to be able to get that resource sheet. Um, and then one thing I will say on the web, if you schedule uh, screenings, again, all of us can see um, any Illinois or Wisconsin resident. So it doesn't matter uh, which counselor you pick. Uh, counseling appointments and screening appointments are for right now all virtual by phone or by WebEx. Uh, so you can pick any counselor that you want. If you do have a geographic preference, uh, my office, when I'm in the office, is Crystal Lake. Violetta's office is North Chicago. Uh, our colleague John works out of Chicago Uptown neighborhood, and uh, Janine's in Country Club Hills. So you can pick it through that, or you can just pick uh, whatever counselor has an open spot on their calendar. Um, the screening appointments, as Violetta mentioned, are only 30 minutes. That's not designed to be a, a full counseling session. You know, we won't be reviewing your finances in any kind of detail. That's just an introductory meeting just to get to know each other, for us to get to know more about your goals, what you're looking for, and then to tell you more about our intake uh, process for one-on-one -on -one counseling. So again, um, all those counseling services that we had mentioned earlier, rental, pre-purchase, post-purchase, foreclosure, that kind of, those kind of uh, areas are something that you can pursue. Services are free. And we hope to, um, you know, if you want to come in virtually, we hope to see you or hear from you soon. And we're uh, here to be a resource in your housing and financial life uh, generally. So we hope this was helpful. If you have further questions, uh, you know how to reach us. Um, you can reach us any of these ways. And then uh, if, you, if we got your intake form, we'll know next week and we'll be sending out uh, that resource sheet to the people that sent us their forms. Uh, I wanna say thank you so much, everyone, for coming and uh, spending part of your Saturday with us. and participating and being so, you know, engaged with us. We appreciate it. We appreciate the really great questions we got. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Yes, absolutely. Thank you everyone for your time and attendance. And again, we look to forward to seeing you at a future webinar. Thank you.